1,639, clear take off runway 27, 250 degrees, 16, runway down. Clear take off runway 27, easy 639. Easy 639, correct, contact Manchester Control, 128 decimal 05, fine. 28 05, fine. Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be covering a few graphical mods for X-Plane 12 and I'm going to be showing you the best options that I've found for really cranking up the graphics and the visuals within the sim. X-Plane 12 is of course graphically a significant improvement over its predecessor. The sim can look pretty great at times but I find that the visuals with an X-Plane can be rather hit and miss, the sim often looking too dark and a bit too drab. With its excellent flight modelling though, of course Laminar's platform does still have a lot of utility. So as I say, today we're going to be looking at a few ways that you can enhance your X-Plane 12 experience and really bring the sims visuals a little bit closer towards modern standards. This video isn't intended to be exhaustive and the end result still isn't perfect, but we'll cover off the freeware and payware mods that I use to get X-Plane 12 looking that much more realistic. Just a word of caution before we get underway. As always, do be sure to back up any files or folders as required before making any of the changes that you see here in today's video. I do hope you enjoy the video and find it to be of use. If you do, then please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Okay, so a good and obvious place to start would be my global graphic settings that I use within X-Plane 12. It is worth noting that I do have a pretty beefy PC setup. You can find my PC specs down in the video description below. And so, of course, your hardware setup will dictate how far you can move many of these sliders over to the right. And that, of course, will affect the overall visual fidelity of the sim. Once again, this video isn't intended to cover all of these settings and their impacts on level of detail. There are plenty of videos here on YouTube that will explain these settings to you. But for reference, with a modern PC, you can see that I have pretty much everything cranked up to the max and I'm still able to maintain a decent FPS within the sim. One point to make is that the scenery featured here in today's video is Orbex True Earth Great Britain. The scenery package offers a huge improvement over X-Plane 12's default scenery. However, you can of course create your own ortho scenery to create a similar effect. Whilst X-Plane 12 can look pretty decent at times with all of these settings maxed out, as I mentioned during the introduction, Personally, I still find that the sim often tends to look overly dark, even in direct sunlight, and the colours as well within the sim can also be fairly muted. So with that in mind, that takes us on to the next step of our modification process, Shade X. Shade X is a payware mod that allows for real-time adjustment of a number of visual settings within X-Plane. The program can be purchased from Aerosoft, the xplane.org store, for around 15 US dollars. Whilst the plugin is technically designed for use within X-Plane 11, I've had no problems installing and using the program with X-Plane 12. ShadeX is the tool that I use to really brighten up the X-Plane world and add a little bit more saturation to the colours as well within the sim. Also sharpen up the visuals a bit, as by default, the sim does have a slightly fuzzy quality to its graphics overall. It would be fair to say that when making these sorts of adjustments to contrast, exposure and saturation etc, there's certainly no free lunch, you will have to compromise a little bit here and there to get everything looking decent at different times of day, under different weather conditions and so on. So the settings that you can see here on the screen are what I found to be a good compromise. It might be rather tricky to replicate my settings exactly just by looking at the sliders. So I've also uploaded my preset over on xplane.to and I'll leave a link to that down in the video description below. So we've now taken care of xplane's overall visual quality. The last major issue that I have with the sim under certain conditions are its clouds and sky colours. That then brings us on to Visual XP. Visual XP is another payware plugin which can be purchased on the xplane.org store. It is important to note here that there are multiple different versions of the program from Visual XP Basic right the way through to Visual XP Ultimate. The add-on can therefore cost anything from 10 USD right up to around $26. But for our purposes, we only need the basic edition, which again, will set you back around 10 USD. Visual XP, much like Shade X, is not perfect, but the program overall does a nice job of allowing you to adjust atmospheric colours, visibility, light scattering, 
as well as cloud types, shadows, density and brightness. These adjustments I find make a big difference to X-Plane's visual fidelity and tend to help quite a bit as well with ambient lighting, reducing the sim's tendency to either be overly dark or overly exposed. Once again, this isn't intended to be a detailed breakdown on the functionality available with Visual XP, but on the screen here you can see the settings, which I find work best within the sim. It is worth playing around with the application though, as there are some other nice options, particularly with regards to ozone colouring. Lastly, as a little bit of a bonus mod, the cockpit shadows within x 12 can often be a little bit low resolution, leading to that sawtooth shadow pattern that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. It's actually a relatively straightforward process to adjust the resolution of these shadows, albeit this cannot be done from the x settings menu, so you will need to have some degree of familiarity when it comes to adjusting the x settings file. The settings file can be found in your x 12 resources folder, and once you've opened that up you'll need to either scroll down or search for the FBO shadow cam size options. If you change all of those fields from their default value over to 8192, and then resave the file, you'll get a nice visual bump in terms of the shadow quality in the cockpit within X-Plane. Once again, do make sure you back up your settings file before making these changes. If you'd like more detail on this process and modification, head over to Q8 Pilot's YouTube channel, he details everything you need to know, and again, I'll leave a link to his video down in the video description below. Unlike with our previous tweaks, you may notice more of an FPS impact with this particular change, so do be cognizant of that if you're running the sim on older hardware. So there you go guys, once again that's my guide to enhancing graphical fidelity within x 12. As I mentioned previously, the results aren't perfect and you may find that with a little bit of additional tweaking you can improve things further, but I hope you'll agree that the results are a significant improvement overall. It is certainly worth noting that much of the tweaking done here with both Shade X and Visual XP can also be done by the user for free, simply through adjusting data refs within the sim. However, I find the plugins easier to use and more consistent overall. Both plugins, whilst fairly basic, fortunately aren't too pricey. As I mentioned during the introduction, of course your results will vary depending on your PC hardware, but hopefully this video will give you some ideas and options for those of you really looking to push your visuals within x 12. As x 12 is still heavily in development, do bear in mind also that many aspects of the sim are still likely to continue to change, including the graphics. Therefore, the aforementioned plugins and tips may ultimately become outdated or even redundant. Once again, I do hope you enjoyed the video and found it to be of use. If you did, then please consider giving it a like. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, then please do consider subscribing as well. And if you'd like to help support the channel further, you can do so by becoming a channel member or patron. Links to both of those are down in the video description below. As always, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support. It is very much appreciated. And to all of you, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Take really good care and I will see you all again soon.